Hello, my name is Bogdana Nemtsu and this is module number 4 entitled Social Sustainability. This class provides you with an introduction to sustainable development measurement. First of all, let me briefly address the issue if we can really measure sustainability, which is a very broad and vague concept. In the last 10-15 years, there has been a tendency in social sciences to try to measure very abstract and subjective concepts. One such example is the happiness index. You have on the slide a link where you can find more information about what happiness index is and how happiness is actually uh, measured. The development of metrics for things considered in the past unsuitable for measurement is in general connected to performance measurement, including, in the public sector, greater demand for transparency and accountability. How can we really measure sustainability? And what is it that we are trying to measure? Based on the literature, I can tell you that there are two main approaches. The first approach basically assesses how seriously organizations or cities are pursuing sustainability. This assessment option is based on whether issues of sustainability can be said to be clearly on the organization on the organization's agenda or on the public agenda in the case of city, cities. The emphasis is not on the extent to which organizations or cities have actually achieved particular environmental results. It rather focuses on the existence or lack thereof of a set of policies and programs aimed at increasing sustainability. The critique in the case of this approach is that very often the existence of a sound environmental plan does not necessarily translate into good environmental results. The second option available for organization or cities is to build measurement systems that directly assess the state and the quality of the environment and of other dimensions such as economic growth, social equity and quality of life that may be brought under the umbrella of sustainability. In this case, sustainability indicators are at the core of designing and implementing a measurement system of organizational or urban sustainability. In my presentation, I am going to focus mostly on this second option and we are going to discuss how measurement systems are actually built. First of all, when we are building measurement systems, we need to talk about sustainability indicators. First of all, what are indicators? Indicators are bits of information that reflect the status of large systems. They can also be considered useful tools for policy making and public communication in conveying information of, on countries or cities' performance in fields such as the environment, economy, society or technological de development. Their role is to simplify, quantify, analyze and communicate otherwise complex and complicated information. A couple of distinctions need to be made. Indicators are not the same as data or variables. Datum becomes an indicator only once its role in the evaluation of a phenomenon has been established. Also, sustainability indicators greatly different, differ from environmental ones. They are not only integrating, but forward-looking, distributional and we and with input from multiple stakeholders.
Another distinction that is important is the one between indicators and indexes. An index or a composite indicator is a synthesis of indicators, of multiple indicators. The use of indices in the field of sustainable development facilitates the understanding and interpretation of a given phenomenon, particularly for the public. The public can much more easily understand a single number, which allows for benchmarking exercises. Indicators and indexes have to be designed with a direction, good or bad, which indicates whether the trend is evolving towards sustainability or whether it is moving away from it. Again, the direction allows even for the public to quickly understand how an organization or community is performing over a given interval of time. In the literature, there are a couple of questions that need to be considered when we are building such measurement systems. I will briefly go over these questions and provide you with some of the most important things that you need to keep in mind. A first, in, a first question has to do with, with which indicators are the best and how many should we include in such a measurement system. I have to tell you that there is no consensus on, the, on this topic and that th there is a great diversity of measurement system and indicators used. The system that I've examined have anywhere from 10 to 100 indicators depending on the complexity of the proposed system. A second question has to do with the nature of the indicators. Should they be entirely based on the natural environment or should they include social and economic factors? The tendency, at least more recently, is to include not only environmental indicators but also social ones. However, there are two opposing views in the literature regarding the way in which sustainability should evolve over time. On the one hand, there are authors who argue that in order to obtain a less superficial approach to the design of sustainable development indicators, sustainable development should not be systematically redefined when adapted to a particular territorial context. The other approach, which is completely different, states that instead of trying to set limits on what sustainability means, the concept should be made even broader. These views are not merely theoretical because they impact the way in which a measurement system is built. Please take a look at textbox number one and textbox number two on this slide. They basically represent two examples of sustainability indicators from two cities. One is Minneapolis in the US and the other one is Prague in the Czech Republic. Please take a look at the type of indicators uh, that are being used, whether they focus mostly on environmental data or they include other type of data as well. A third question looks of, at whether these indicators are transportable or adaptable across cities, nations, or even the globe. Is it useful to know that a certain city is ranked 37th most sustainable city in the world, for example? In the literature, there are indications that some indicators are recognized and used worldwide. Rankings and measurement systems considered foreign transplants may be ignored by the national and local policy maker. And this is an argument against using um, measurement systems built in other systems. A fourth question has to do more with the governance of, of the entire system. 
Who should initiate and lead the process? This is a very important question. Should the public sector be credited with a leading role or is a partnership among interesting, interested stakeholders usually leaded by an NGO better? There are two approaches. On the one hand, we can have broad public participation, usually fostered by grassroots organization, which is key part of any sustainability effort. On the other hand, we can have a professionally driven, technically processed due to the fact that there are numerous objective conditions that describe the state of a city. Of course, the two approaches can be combined. I looked at various examples of sustainability measurement systems and I try to include a couple of such systems that are mostly relevant at international level. First, I am asking you to examine the China Urban Sustainability Index, which is an annual research project undertaken by the McKinsey Global Institute and the Urban China Initiative. The latter organization is basically a think tank co-founded by McKinsey and Company at the Columbia University and a university in China in 2010. The organization mission is to convene leaders from the public and private sectors to promote sustainable urbanization and economic growth in China. The evaluation under the umbrella of this index is done by breaking down the issues into four categories for analysis. We have economy, society, resources and the environment, including cleanliness and the built environment. We have 23 indicators for the index to quantify the level of sustainability. To bolster the emphasis on quality of life compared to previous years, indicators such as per capita disposable income, employment rate, number of doctors per capita, and others were aided. Please take a look on the table included on the slide that portrays the dimensions and the indicators used under this system from China. You can see that the society dimension is 33% of the entire score and under social welfare, we have issues such as employment, doctor resource, education, pension, and health care. A second index that I think is very relevant and it's worth exploring in the context of this course is the Arcadi Sustainable Cities Index. I liked it because it examines 50 cities from 31 countries, ranking them across a range of indicators that estimate the sustainability of each city. The cities included within this report were selected to provide an overview of the planet cities, providing not only wide-ranging geographical coverage, but also a variety of levels of economic development, expectations of future growth, and an assortment of sustainability challenges. Please take a look at um, the three dimensions featured on your slide. You can see that they have a dimension called people, a dimension called planet, and a dimension called profit. It is easy to see that each organization is trying 
to relabel the traditional dimension of sustainability using words or concepts that are more easily to be understood. Under the people dimension, which is basically the social dimension of sustainable development, we have a measurement of social performance, including quality of life. On this slide, you can see how uh, this index is applied to a specific European city, Rotterdam, from the Netherlands. And you can see how it ranks. I chose this, um, this city because it ranks very high in respect to the social dimension, the one that we are mostly interested in. Please read carefully and see what makes this city to score so high on the social sustainability dimension. One important issue regarding sustainability measurement is what do we do with the results once we have finalized the measurement? How do we communicate the results of the measurement and to whom? How organizations communicate the results of, sustainab of sustainability measurement is equally important as the quality of the report itself. Generally, there is low readership of such reports, especially among the citizens, who do not have the time or the expertise to properly understand everything. Results presented in graphical form in a non-technical manner enjoy the biggest popularity, again, mostly among the citizens. Continuity and predictability are important as well because citizens know to look for when to look for the report or the index, every January, for example. In my research, I have encountered various means of reporting on sustainability issues. The next class is going to be mostly focused on sustainability reporting, but at this point, I would like to share with you a specific method which is called the Dashboard of Sustainability. Dashboard of Sustainability is basically a tool developed by the end of the 1990s in order to measure the different dimensions of sustainability. However, what I liked about the dashboard is that it helps a concise and synthetic appraisal with great visual impact. The software allows to synthesize a wide variety of data and environmental, economic and social information in a single graphical and numerical evaluation form. The dashboard organizes the assessment information into three levels, represented by the, by the following concentric rings. We have an outer ring, which represents the individual indicators used to evaluate sustainability. The inner ring represents synthetic indexes, which integrate multiple indicators, environment, economy, and social care, into a single measure. The innermost circle is reserved for a synthetic index of overall sustainability, the so-called Sustainable Development Index, or PPI, the Policy Performance Index. This synthetic index is obtained by averaging the indexes of the inner ring. It's important to know that the dashboard of sustainability presents information both numerically and graphically by assigning each subject or indicator to a color segment of the outer ring. The length of a segment is a measure of its relative importance with respect to other indicators in the same category. The color of a segment reports on the performance of the indicator relative to its value in other contexts. This policy evaluation scale goes from excellent dark green to very bad dark red. Please 
see on this slide how the dashboard of sustainability looks at global level. The assessment is done with regard to the level of fulfillment of millennium goals. Even if we are not very familiar with the indicators used, knowing what the colors represent, it is quite easy to assess which dimensions have done okay, which dimensions have done great, and which are the challenges for the future concerning the fulfillment of Millennium Goals. On this slide, you have another applicability of the dashboard of sustainability. This time, it's at the national level, where we are comparing to African countries with respect to gender equality. You have, for example, featured on the PowerPoint slide, Kenya and Rwanda. And by simply, <coughs> and by simply looking at the colors, we can see that with regard to women in parliament, Rwanda is doing a lot better than Kenya. The colors are of great help and, and it allows readers to get very quickly familiar with various issues. On this slide, we are looking at how the dashboard of sustainability works at the local level and we have the city of Padua, Italy between 1997 and 2001. We can clearly see how various areas of sustainability, uh, of sustainability have evolved over time. Of course, it is possible to have other approaches to measuring sustainability. The assessment models that I've described for you thus far imply the use of some version of multi-criteria analysis. What does this mean? You could have seen in my examples that the measurement system is based on a set of indicators or indexes whose importance is sometimes weighted organized into dimensions or categories. Of course, these are complex systems. It is, however, possible to base the assessment of sustainability on a single measure or, or criterion. One of the most known such measures is carrying capacity and ecological footprint. I have to tell you that ecological footprint has emerged as one of the world's leading measures of human demand on nature. It allows us to calculate human, human pressure on the planet and come up with facts such as if everyone lived the lifestyle of the average American, we would need five planets to satisfy such requirements. Ecological footprint represents the productive area required to provide the renewable resources humanity is using and to absorb its waste. It was conceived in 1990s by two scientists at the University of British Columbia. And um, you can see at the link included in the PowerPoint um, footprint movement information. Based on this idea of ecological footprint, a variety of applications have been developed, such as footprint calculators. These are ways based on the scientific information to assess how much space a community or an individual needs based on various consumption patterns. If you go online, you can try to compute your own ecological footprint.
This is a different calculator for assessing your ecological footprint. It's interesting to see that not all these applications use exactly the same indicators. Some concluding remarks. Measurement systems strive to quantify whether or not cities and organizations are headed in the right direction in their quest for a more sustainable future. There are numerous possibilities ranging from reductionist systems, systems that take into account just one feature, such as the carrying capacity that we discussed a little bit before, to multidimensional analysis, which uses several dimensions and a broad set of indicators. The type of measurement system selected ultimately depends on how sustainability is defined. As we've discussed in the beginning of the presentation, there are two main approaches to this. Sustainability can be seen as a given, objectively defined based on a set of criteria put forth by the Brundtland Report or other similar documents. This view is usually associated with the belief in the existence of measurement systems that can be used in multiple contexts and which are usually expert-driven. On the other hand, sustainability can be envisioned as being socially produced through negotiation among different groups. Thus, its meaning is constantly subject to redefinition. This view favors broad public participation and emphasizes non-technical approaches that better convey the community's take on sustainability. In practice, compromises between these two views can be reached. As you could see, most of the measurement systems we analyzed in this presentation include both some expert-driven data as well as subjective based on perception indicators. Municipal governments, which are interested in setting up and implementing measurement systems of urban sustainability, should first consider several questions before proceeding with the actual design and implementation in order to make sure that the chosen assessing system matches their goals and expectations. If this pre-assessment stage is not properly done, you may end up with a system which is measuring something completely different from what you want.